but no. Um, yeah, because uh, that's the problem, right? Like, a lot of these guys I was watching, like, it's just, like, it's not, it's entertaining if you're just watching it, but, like, it's not really something you can watch or listen to and paint, you know what I mean? Like, there's there's some things that you just can't have on while you're you're working, you know what I mean? Oh, does Nolan have any issues again? You guys know? It looks like he might be. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, no one. Yeah. Let's listen. Yeah, he's not here. He he Dang just it. jumped in and then he just left. Yeah, let's like wait till we make sure that he's officially able to. Okay, yeah, let's not... start painting. Yeah. I'm All not right, sure I'm... if we sorted this out. I thought I, I thought I told John about it. I don't know if John actually helped him out. If not, I'll just do it right now. We'll figure it out. Looks like he's back on, but no mic. Yeah, I'm talking a little, but it looks like yeah, clearly you're not using any audio because you, you can see there's no mic next to his thing, which is an indication that he's not using any kind of audio. And so, here, let me, let me go ahead and, um, yes, but I can see you are not using any computer audio. So, let's deduct what's going wrong. First, are you using a laptop? Do, do, do. Here, I'm going to pause recording. Okay. All right. I'll go workshop with them right now. Okay. And that's the secret to concept art. So, if you missed it... <laughs> Nolan, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I I'm just so enlightened. Yeah, I just started recording. <laughs> but he's just gonna be like, "What? Oh no!" Yeah. So you guys all got that right now. You guys will all get jobs tomorrow. Cool. <laughs> and unfortunately, I can only say it once a year. <laughs> Anyway, so the, today will just be a relatively shorter class. Um, we're just going to hang out and just you guys ask me questions, and I'm going to do some painting, and then uh, painting okay. slash drawing. So you're just going to like paint randomly right now? I'm painting randomly, yes. I'm going to just be, uh, me and my friends are going to be working on a, a kind of a literature project. Some of my some of my students I worked with before, and we're uh, um, we have this like meeting. We're gonna meet up every week, and we're just gonna work on a project. And then, on Saturday? Uh, huh? Is it the Saturday class that you have? No, it's it's a different group okay. of people. And then uh, and uh, the goal is just to make a project over like the course of a month and help each other out, give each other critiques and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so for when we start, um, I don't know, and next week when we actually start, should we have our um, like our la our freaking uh, Cintiqs or whatever Wacom tablets open? Like, should we have our drawing equipment? Out? Oh no, you don't need to. Everything will be submitted, and then I'll just do paint overs and talk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's no. You can. You can obviously. You can obviously be working during class and stuff while listening to other people's critiques and stuff, but you, you don't need to necessarily have anything. Um, every once in a while, I'll be like, hey, you know, guys, try drawing this thing as like a, as part of like my lecture, but it's not required. Also, the thumbnails weren't actually due today. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're just doubly <laughs> working hard all the time, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> they're they're like uh next week is when we're gonna be looking for them, so I apologize if that was not clear. So Wednesday next week. Yes. To okay. this week is like not really a a week. I mean technically <laughs> technically is still a week regardless of what I said. But um what this week is is just where we're gonna meet up the days that we were supposed to. And I'm just going to do a demo where you guys ask me questions. and It's kind of like a prelude to the class. Mm. Yeah. It's pre-class. Um, By the way, 
My friend uh, Denzel, who you taught last year, says hi. He's like, I don't like that guy. Uh, tell Denzel he's stupid. <laughs> tell Denzel he needs to get a job. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I told him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Denzel, if you guys don't know, he is one of the worst humans on this planet. He is. He used to. My classmate. He used I've to. dealt with it firsthand. Yeah, he used to go around punching puppies. Yeah. And kidnapping little kittens. Yeah, I was like, I was in class with this guy. I was teaching him, and then I just hear in the background, it was like little dog sounds. And I was like, "What's going on back there?" He's like, "Oh, nothing. Just like kicking puppies." I'm like, "What?" Why would you do that? And secondly, why would you tell me that you're doing that? Like, shame. And he's like, I don't like puppies, man. I don't like puppies, and I love kittens. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I steal kittens for a living. It's like, what? Though? He's like, how do you think I pay for these these classes? I go around stealing kittens, selling them to <clears throat> selling them to black market Chinese restaurants. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, so oh, yeah, that's how I found out about your mentorship is through them. Yeah. Chinese restaurant. Yeah, well, you know, Chinese restaurant. Eating some cat, cat stew. And then the, the cat was so delicious. He's like, man, where did this cat come from? And then he met Denzel. And then he went to our school together. And then, and then that's the rest of the story. There you go. He actually teaches a course at our school of how to steal cats. He has like uh, a little club. Yeah, all jokes aside, that's a real thing, though. So, what do you mean? People steal other people's animals and then sell it to restaurants in China, and then they eat them. Oh, it happens down what? here in Mexico as well, but with dogs and taco places. Nice. Yeah, no. What the fuck? No, yeah, I'm not. Fucking no, what the fuck? Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm a vegan, and so, like, um, this stuff You are? Is, yeah. So this stuff is... Uh, this yeah. stuff is very clear to me. I know a lot of the things, uh, and I'm not an ethic. I didn't start off as an ethical uh, vegan. I am. Um, I did it for health reasons, and then mm -hmm. uh, when you start to eat like less and less meat, and then eventually no meat, um, all those like videos of like slaughterhouses and stuff, and like like all the ethical aspects of eating less meat starts to become a lot more objective. Yeah, because before I would be like, well, it's nature. This is way of life. Tigers yeah. do it. And it's because, and, you know, because I was stupid and I didn't know any better. I didn't really think about what I was saying <laughs> as the structure of my argument. I didn't realize that I'm technically not a tiger. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, it's not like, why am I comparing myself to an animal that I'm nothing like? Why not compare myself close to, to our closest ancestors, which is the great apes? who do yeah. not at all <laughs> eat other animals, and they're enormous and well-built, like built, right? Yeah. Uh, and they my live... friend started making me get vegan as well, like some of my good friend who's vegan. Yeah, yeah. So... It's true, like, once you stop eating as much meat, you don't have to rely on it as much. And it's, it's like, I don't know, I kind of had like a mind-blowing realization when I was always eat, eating like meat and stuff, but then recently I just would not eat it as much. And now I'm slowly starting to not really eat it. It's, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you, kinda... you become, it becomes more, you become more objective, I guess. And uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's what happened to me, at least. And then, like, when, um, you know, because I used to, like, talk about, like, uh, make fun of foods and stuff that people didn't realize they were eating. And, like, uh, but now it's not a joke anymore. Like, uh, for instance, like, I used to be like, you guys like chicken omelets? Like omelets, chicken omelets, and they're like, oh, yeah, man, love it. And I'm like, you know what you're eating, right? You're yeah. eating, like, the mother the wrapped red. her baby's embryo. It's, like, terrible. <laughs> it's, like, the, one of the most terrible things you could possibly eat. And it's then, actually even worse because eggs are um, the chicken's period. Yeah, they're not even, yeah, they're not even like, a baby chicken, oh, right? Yeah. I have a question. I saw this video on Facebook, like, you know how people are sharing videos now, basically, on Facebook? You don't really use it to, show, like, to do anything else but sharing videos. But anyway. Yeah, what are you, what are you trying to explain to me, like, the Internet? 
<laughs> like, yeah. like, you know the internet, right? Like, you know how people share <laughs> hey, pictures? Hey, cat pictures. Yeah, I'm like, what's going on here? Okay, go ahead, finish your thought. <laughs> oh, sorry. Anyway, but um, I saw this video. This guy, he bought these, um, uh, not chicken eggs, but an- another type of egg. They had, like, po- they had, like, polka dots on them. But anyway, and he, oh, just, he put oh, in it. Pardon? Alien eggs? <laughs> Yes, alien egg. Uh, no. So he just took one of the eggs and put it underneath one of those heat lights, and it, it eventually hatched. Whoa. No. No way. Hold on, I'm going to link it to you right now. Yeah, yeah there were also some uh, uh, chickens, some uh, like the same, the same thing in Holland, that uh, there was a woman who did the same thing, and also uh, some uh, chickens were hatched from the eggs. That's crazy. I'll have to try that out here, because I thought... I'm pretty sure they go through like. How did he became a mother? <laughs> you know, like they have to like go. Th- at least I know in the states because I heard like in. Um, do you think like, they do? About, like in France. Well, let me huh? let me ask you a question. Are you sure? I, I'm like. Yeah. See. You, when you start to real, no. <laughs> when you when you start to just think about it for half a second, do you really think they do a thing? Or are you just looking hope they do? Because that's that's the real that's the real thing, you know. That's that's the thing where you start to realize there is this um, really um, interesting documentary about like this lady who basically calls like an organic grass-fed, you know, uh, I think it was like pig farm or something. Mm-hmm. And she was asking all these questions that, according like according to what they were saying they should have been doing and they were not doing at all. And it's funny because like she would ask them, the guy just tell her like, no, we don't do that. And she's like, but like the regulation. So, and she, he's like, yeah, but we can't do that. He's like, you know how much, how many animals we had to deal with and like all this stuff. And she was just kind of like, what in the world? You know? So even people that yeah. claim that they're doing, yeah. yeah, clearly ethical and reasonable things are probably lying to you. You know, like how do you yeah. know for sure? Um, and that's 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 something that, like I said, ethically, I started kind of realizing. Um, but you know, I digress. We can we can get back to asking mm-hmm. our questions. We can jump off of this very depressing topic about how we're destroying our planet <laughs> and murdering mass amounts of animals. <laughs> Some other time. And I was like, he's so mean to me. Leave the eggs alone. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is that Denzel is the reason all this is happening, and we need to stop him. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the core of this this point. Yeah. 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 You ruined me, man. I used to love eggs. Now look at me. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't like eggs at all, man. Not anymore. Yeah, let me just be clear here. Um, Health wise. Uh, eating an egg a day is equivalent to smoking five cigarettes a day for 15 years. Oh my God. Yeah. It's pretty much pretty straight. Much straight. I'm a chain smoker. Wait, wait. You it's, got sources to back that up? Yeah, it's called, uh, it's, called Pub, it's called PubMed. You can go and look online. There's a public medical website. There's a doctor called uh, Dr. Greger who all he does is research all this stuff. And he puts it all online for free. He's not, like non-profit. He doesn't get any money for this stuff. He just does a public service for everybody and reads all these articles for everyone for so you can like – and you can read them yourselves, you know. He just digests them because sometimes like the medical terminology might confuse the hell out of you. Um, it's because it's uh, – egg yolk is pretty much straight cholesterol. And um, yeah. if you don't know, cholesterol clogs your arteries. I'm not sure if you knew this, but that high amounts of saturated fat and cholesterol fucking kill you. Yeah, yeah that's bad. It's like scientifically proven case, yeah. by case by case by case. And you know what <laughs> eggs are, right? Yeah. They're just pure they're literally fat. pure cholesterol and saturated fat. Yeah. In fact, the egg industry cannot claim that eggs are uh, healthy or safe. They can. There's no advertisement ever found on egg products that are health. They said that they're healthy or safe. That is a so what do you fact? Okay. And so because they're just not. The FDA says you can't do that because it's a lie. <laughs> they literally said, egg company, you cannot do that. So what they do instead, they're like, oh, you know, we uh, 
uh, you know, you just need to get your protein in, which is, again, is one of the greatest American lies. <laughs> it's one of the biggest American lies. That, Even around the world. Yeah, there's no such thing as protein deficiency. It's, a, it's not a real thing. Um, in fact, overloads of protein can destroy your kidneys and liver. Your body does not know what to do with all that protein. It's like, what are you doing, man? What's going on here? Like, we don't need this much, bro. So, but those gains. Gotta make those gains. Yeah. So, so <laughs> what do you what do you eat in the morning? <laughs> like every morning. Uh, fruits and vegetables specifically. I just like That's throw. It, a but ton. like, for example, I used to always eat eggs. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Hmm? So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> Wait, no, I didn't hear. Yeah, I could. I used to eat uh, cereal. Uh, there's like lots of different cereals you can eat. They're really good. And then uh, uh, oatmeal is obviously a great thing you can eat. And then, um, but I, I now what I do is just blend everything because I don't want to really prepare anything anymore. And I just like throw it all into a blender. Like I, like um, I throw two cups of pineapple, two cups of cherries, two cups of berries, like three fistfuls of spinach and kale, and then um, about three cups of soy milk. And I just pound that out in the morning. And uh, that's about it. That's my morning breakfast, and I have like tons of energy. My morning routine. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not hard actually to do that. It's really easy. And then uh, if I have a lot that I can't eat uh, or drink too much, like right in the morning, I just put it into a container and take it with me. Yeah, I, you, you get used to like what to eat once you start substituting things you, like in the beginning I can admit it's not too easy I think like uh, eliminating uh, meat was actually really easy it wasn't too hard actually um, but what was the hardest uh, the biggest challenge um, was dairy like cheese yeah. butter mm. like milk oh, yeah. like, not so much no, no, milk no, no. I didn't really care for milk but like yeah cheese and butter was like that was like big that was a big one that was a really hard thing to do yeah and it wasn't even so much that I like I miss cheese or miss using butter. It's that everyone, no matter where I went to eat, like was using it, and it was like crazy. Like even things that you would never think that there would be any milk in, there was milk in. And I'm like, what in the world? Mm -hmm. I was like, I remember when I went to. Uh, this... Go ahead. Sorry. Continue. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, I was just gonna say there's actually this really really awesome YouTube channel that I watch from these two vegan. Uh, it's a vegan cook channel, and they're filmed here in Toronto, and they're called Ooh. Hot for Food. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're on YouTube. They, it's, it's like the sickest thing ever. And they just, it's like a cooking show or whatever, and they cook all vegan food, and it's amazing. I've, I've tried it out with my friends at their house, or at my friend's house, and, like, it's just so awesome. Like, yeah, you can. Everything. Okay, uh, they can, I'm everything. here now, by the way, so you're good to go. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so oh. the thing was, if, if you guys are having that problem, uh, I guess what it seems to be the problem was using Chrome. Try Firefox. If uh, that's you know the, what? The I was about to say, I was like, maybe try a different browser. That could have been it, too. Yeah, so once you did it, it works now, so you can hear everything. So oh, okay. you guys are good to go. All right, thanks a lot, Kim. I appreciate you. All right. Peace out, bitches. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, finally. Now shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> oh. you know? Wait, wasn't it Nolan or was it Sergey? It's so it was Sergey. It's me. <laughs> Okay. I just right, uh, turn it on from my phone uh, now. The videos or give me a link to the videos when you when you're done, okay? Wait. Yeah. Right. Right. Peace. Well, what just happened? I don't know. <laughs> it's all, all good. Right. Okay. Yeah, here. Did I just turn the bolt? <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> you're good. We're I'll just make it funny. Vegetables. Yeah. Nolan and Nolan are the same person? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. I think so. Like Wait, what? I'm, I'm confused. It's all right. Let's just get back to class. <laughs> Inception. So anyway, you go go look at that YouTube channel, Hot for Food. It's fucking okay. sick. Cool. I'm gonna put it on the Skype. <clears throat> so I will relate to why I, I will I'll, I'll find a way to segue this to why it is actually important to eat uh, a better diet. And I'm not saying that you should be uh, a vegan. That's just what I happen to be. And it's like, I don't even consider myself a <clears throat> a, a vegan. It's just the, the way to describe it is easier if I just say that word. Because 
when I say that, everyone already has a preconceived notion of what that is. Pretty much someone that doesn't yeah. eat any animals or any animal product. But because you're a vegan doesn't necessarily you're healthy meat. It doesn't mean you're healthy either. Because you like potato chips are vegan, for instance. Um, like certain candies are vegan. <clears throat> Coca Cola is vegan. But I would not recommend eating these things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, like you know they're they're just as bad, if not worse for you, than obviously some, than some meats and even eggs, right? Like, because there's trans yeah. fats in some things like these, and trans fats are worse than saturated fats because they're not real. They're like fake-ass fats, and at least saturated fats are fats that your body can really work with. It's just you don't need so much of it, right? <clears throat> and so, And so really my message is about healthy eating, right? And if, if you look at why we should eat healthy, it's because, you know, um, you want to avoid foods that are high in saturated fat and high in cholesterol because it clogs your arteries. And when it clogs your arteries, you know, when people think of clogged arteries, they really think about mostly, like, your 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 heart, right? And, like, this because if you have clogged arteries, that's how you get heart attacks because the arteries in your heart are, pl- like, plagued with plaque and they're, like, really screwed up, right? And there's no blood going to your heart, and then your heart's like, oh, no blood? Well, I guess we'll just start beating you regularly to try to really figure out how to save your life. Or probably just stop in general because we're fucking done dealing with this bullshit. You know? And then you die, right? Um, but but arteries are all throughout your whole body. You understand? Um, from into your, your muscles, into your arm, like into your legs, into your arms, into your your intestines, you know, into your other organs of your body. And one of the most important ones of your body, uh, parts of your, of your body is your brain. The arteries in your brain actually start to get clogged as well because it's not just one artery, it's all your arteries get clogged. In fact, one of the earliest signs of clogged arteries or like a really severe uh, cholesterol, like high cholesterol level is uh, erectile dysfunction because it's the easiest one to tell. Because if you can't get boners, then, or you have like very low uh, sexual drive, um, then it's really a clear sign that your arteries are clogged up. And that's like the easiest mm-hmm. one. Yeah, that's the easiest one to pay attention to, because it's like such a clear, like blood's not flowing correctly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, when you start to have foods and um, and a diet that starts to promote like clearing all that stuff up, your your brain you start to have more energy. That's the biggest one. Um, the next thing you do you have is you start to have more clarity. You start to see you start to be a little bit more aware. You know what I mean? Like, everything just starts to get a little bit better. In fact, all the common problems that specifically the Western diet-eating people have, like having low energy, having, you know, low sex drives, having um, uh, imbalanced hormones and, like, you know, irregular, like, bowel movements, like uh, diabetes, Alzheimer's, all these, like, common diseases that are just kind of are becoming just standard now are all products of just bad diet. Um, here's a really, really good um, correlation that relates to us artists. Carpal tunnel. It's the same thing. Yes. Your carpal tunnel will actually go away. I used to have carpal tunnel. I don't have it anymore. Um, well, because, yeah. again, the artery, there's like what the carpal tunnel is, the blocking of your carpal tunnel. right? That's why you get the numbness in your hands. And if you eat regularly, that what ends up happening, the plaque that is plaquing up the... the your carpal tunnel starts to get eroded. Um, sometimes it's solidified and it's, it's too late, and you have to get surgery anyway. But but if you switch your diet, you will you should never get carpal tunnel again. You mean like if you go to a vegan diet, right? Well, like I said, well, you I were doing a vegan diet, right? Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm doing now. But I didn't start that way. I started off just eating less meat. I okay. just looked, like eat like uh, it was recommended that you should only be eating about once or twice a week. You know. Because yeah. um, specifically Americans, we eat way too much of everything. Yeah. And meat is one of those Even things. Native, yeah. Yeah. The meat is just happens to be one of those things that we eat way too much of. You know. Yeah. And I mean, start... my, 
my mom also she like makes every dinner she it's always with some kind of me and I remember I introduced to her like it was not too long ago that maybe last in, in September but I'm like I don't really want to eat this much meat and so I told her to cut away all the meat that she would be including into like meals and stuff uh -huh. and it's just like I never thought about how much meat that we eat but it's like I'm pretty sure in the past I don't know when we were like cave people or whatever uh, freaking we didn't eat meat all the time and even if we did we we know we could it, it wasn't practical yeah. think about it like exactly uh, you have to catch it prepare it cook it do all yeah. the stuff it's just because exactly. the reason why we could do it today so I'm right? like why are we eating so much meat yeah, yeah, exactly reason, even when I go to why, uh, Europe oh, sorry. they're right. eating so much meat over there when I go to where? Europe like when I go to Europe, like back home where I'm from, uh -huh. Serbia, like where I go there, they're always eating meat and they're always, people, like the death rate over there is around like 60, 70 years old. And they're like, that's common here. And I'm just like, no, it's like, that's not a good thing. It's because they're eating so much bad, like, like meat and just like uh, saturated everything. It's just like, and then they wonder, oh, I don't know, oh, you guys in Canada or in, you know, America are eating, which was like, Freaking random shit! You're not eating real real food. It's just like no, you don't understand. You yeah, the the healthiest the uh, yeah the healthiest country, the healthiest diet is the Mediterranean diet, and their diet is uh, specifically and mostly consists of fruits and vegetables, um, and they eat uh, fish too. Well, they eat lots of fish too, but it's not as much as you think. It's like it's uh it's it's basically what you would imagine what it was like back in the day where meat was more of like you know now it's the reverse right like meat is the is the main dish and the vegetables and stuff are the side dish or like on the yeah. side it, it used to be the opposite like plant-based foods were the main source and then you would eat some meat uh korean diet is a good example of this because i'm korean and like my uh, mom would prepare me these meals, and they would pri primarily be just rice and vegetables, uh, specifically like seaweed, kimchi, bean sprouts, and rice. And then, like, you would have meat. It would just be a little bit. It wouldn't be a lot. It would just be, like, enough. In fact, I, 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 when I was a kid, I could not eat any meat unless I had rice. It just, just didn't make sense to me to eat that meat. I just didn't like having just meat in my mouth. I liked having like kimchi with some yeah. rice with seaweed, you know. And um, mm -hmm. I didn't think much of it until, you know, recently, obviously. And then, but like, yeah, like I started having all these chronic problems and I just didn't know what to do. And so I decided to switch over to this diet and that's that's when things started getting better for me. And <clears throat> and I, I highly recommend it to everybody. And I'd recommend specifically for everyone just to start eating less bad stuff, right? Eat a lot more yeah, vegetables, a lot more fruits, a lot yeah. more plant-based foods. And I, I like to tell people, try to eat more foods that are from, like, eat like a poor person. Because poor people in, like, poor countries eat basically plant-based food <laughs> diets, and they have some of the healthiest um, uh, people mm -hmm. in the world. The, the things that they're dying from are other things, like malnutrition and starvation, because they don't have enough food. Or they'll have like a, what was the this is a disease in Africa that's really bad because the water is basically poisoned with like feces, right? They have other problems to worry about. They're not worried about like diabetes and like heart attacks. Like there was like a study that was done in Kenya about like one person that died from a heart attack, and they're like, what? Like, can you die from a heart attack? <laughs> and they're like, they everyone like was like, what? How is that possible? You know, and. Where in America, like, die from a heart attack is, yeah. like, basic. It's, like, standard. Um, and so when you look at the Korean diet, the Korean um, diet has now been becoming more and more uh, westernized. And uh, guess what's happening? People are dying more and more from, specifically, from diabetes. Because diabetes is super immediate. Because when you eat meat with white rice, it exponentially spikes your s insulin reaction. And so what is the staple of Korean diet is like white rice. Like that's like their fucking, that's their literally li their bread and butter, right? And so when you started eating more and more meat, guess what? Like they're starting to get all the, our American diseases. 
And because they had, they, they had the skinny fat problem. And that's the same kind of problem that I had, which is that I don't look like I'm out of, that's what I, have, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't look unhealthy. Right? I'm very fit. Um, I'm not uh, overweight. And yet I was diagnosed with like prediabetes. And I was like, what? You know? And all this, these problems started coming. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know what the hell to do because the doctors, by the way, uh, most physicians, probably all of them, know just as much about diet and nutrition than you do. So don't trust their insight. Like they're, um, they're, uh, they're taught to prescribe drugs. You know? Yeah, I can attest to that because I work in a pharmacy. So yeah, so it's, it's, you're just like, what are you talking? Why are you telling them that? Yeah, they're like, oh, you have back pain? So let me give you some drugs. Oh, you got minor migraine? Let me give you some drugs. Like literally, like the pharmaceutical industry and the hospitals are working together. You must understand this. And <clears throat> and this is this is another problem that started to arise and made me very clearly because like, I w I went to the doctor so many times and I never. Could get never really could get cured, you know, and that bothered me, man. And one thing that I, I think is really important for us artists is to be healthy because we are mostly sitting down, we are exactly. mostly in dark environments, we are mostly yeah. like not so we're only compounding our deaths and our inability to be good artists by, um, by basically uh, not eating well. Like at least eating well is the probably the easiest thing you could probably start training yourself to do. Yeah, that will, and then exercising. And stuff. Then, then exercising, yeah, because actually um, there was a study that took a standard American diet people who did not exercise and then standard American diet people who did exercise. Uh, was there a difference? Yes, of course. The people who exercised had a lot more better health. Uh, their levels of, you know, cholesterol were a little bit lower. Their levels of, you know, uh, diseases were lower. But then they compared that, the, the American uh, diet, people who worked out to uh, vegans who don't work out at all, and the vegan it was the same. vegans destroyed them. No, it wasn't yeah. the same. That means like if you don't do anything but eat better, that, then it's, it's so much better than working out and eating terribly. Mm -hmm. Right? So don't think, oh, I can, you know, I can eat this bacon cheeseburger covered in mayo and ranch as long as I go do some do some weightlifting. Uh, your body on the inside will probably be slowly dying and you won't realize it until you're older. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I highly recommend you just not necessarily be vegan because it's really a hard commitment. I'd rather that be natural, uh, but I will recommend um, just eating less uh, meat and bad mm -hmm. foods. Like, just when you ha when you're in that situation, guys, where you're like, man, I need to do like all this artwork for AJ, and I don't have time to eat whatever. Like, what you can do to solve that problem is buy foods that you like to eat that you you know are already healthy. Like carrots are really easy. Like buy a bag of carrots. I don't know too many people that don't like carrots. Uh, cherry tomatoes are also very easy. Just buy a bunch of cherry tomatoes and carrots. They they have a long shelf life, right? They can be in your kitchen for about a week or two. Right, and they won't go bad. Yeah. Uh, carrots in the refrigerator won't go bad. Uh, buy like apples, oranges. You can get frozen fruits, so that way you can blend stuff together. If you start to eliminating terrible food in your house, and you only have good food in your house that you can snack on. You, you'll you will that alone is tremendous, tremendous. Uh, 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 is a tremendous ability to prevent yourself from eating terribly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like my um, my oldest teenager, he kind of hates eating at home now because like all the food that we have is only good. <laughs> he's so used to like eating terribly, um, but he's unfortunately he's overweight because he still hasn't adopted our diet. But our youngest teenager, he has. I showed him a slaughterhouse video because he was not convinced about this whole stuff, and then I was like, you know what's going on with animals, all right? And I showed him that, and he was just like, yeah, I'm I'm done. He's like, that's terrible. Oh. Yeah, he he was shocked. Can I never vegan? Yeah, he 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 committed to it too. He's pretty much convinced to as well. He realized now he he I think he's doing it for the ethical reasons because I showed him the video and he was just like he's traumatized. He's like that's terrible because he had no idea, right? He didn't know where meat came from, you know. Like he he knew like we killed it. Like he he wasn't 
uh, dumb about that, but he just didn't understand the parameters in which they were killed at. Like, he didn't understand the level of nasty, like, terribleness it was, right? Mm -hmm. And then that, I think that got him, um, that got him really easily. And then uh, my wife did it because she saw how I was, like, my health improved. She just saw, like, I was just a different person all of a sudden. And then she's just like, oh, my gosh, like, you have all this energy and you're, like, you're doing so much better. And then she tried it and then she started seeing, you know, benefits. In the first, uh, yeah, in the first month, I uh, lost, like, seven pounds of just bad weight. It was crazy, like, immediately. Yeah, I feel like I don't exercise enough at all. Like, I really don't. And I really just want to start. But yeah. I think to, to like, going into this kind of a diet is going to be, like you said, you you felt completely different and way better just by changing your diet. So I think that's very... I mean, yeah, even you, I you should you should still move to yes you should move to uh, moving is good whether that's like weightlifting running walking you should move to uh, every hour I typically between every hour or every two hours guys I will get up and walk I will walk I will move I will do something I won't sit at my desk more than an hour or two hours anymore because it's just it's actually good for your brain because if you walk you are pumping blood through your body and remember your 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 brain is a body part and if your brain mm. get enough blood going to it you know you might the, like those creative blocks or those inability to focus not might not be a, a product of your lack of motivation it could be lack of blood flow yeah right? even when i feel like when I, I go out and i walk and stuff when i come back my art looks 10 times better yeah, and you know, walking away from your art in general and just coming back to it and looking at it is a little, mm -hmm. bit, a little more gives you opportunity to be a little bit more objective, right? Because mm -hmm. when you're in your painting for too long, guys, right? Like you, you, you I'm sure most of you guys have dealt with this. Oh, oh, yeah, you think you're doing so great, and then like you, you've been painting for seven hours, and then you leave, and then you wake up the next morning and you look at it, and it's like god awful, right? And it's it's like I always compare that to like a bad relationship. Like, it's like being in a really bad relationship and you don't know how bad it is until you finally get out of it. But all your friends are telling you, you know, they're like, look, you need to get out of that because it's terrible. And you're like, no, yeah. you know, you don't get it. And then uh, and then you finally do because, you know, it's a terrible relationship and it's just a product of what happens. And you get out of the relationship and then get what, right? Like, you are now um, objective about it. You look back at it and you're like, oh, my gosh, what was I doing? And... Like, like, I think art works the same way. Like, if you spend too much time painting on the same painting without thinking about it, mm -hmm. right, you um, you have to, like, really start to, like, um, like, be a little bit more objective because while you're painting. Because when you're painting, there might be little things that are happening. Like, you are, like, working, and then all of a sudden, you know, you learned a little bit about how to paint, like, a material that you didn't know before. And you're like, oh, that's the, you feel good about it, right? There's a little bit of, like, yeah. good feeling. But that good feeling doesn't translate to good painting. You understand? And those good feelings just keep stacking up. So when someone else, like, critiques your work sometimes, and you're just like, they're like, they tell you all the things that are wrong with it. And you're like, in your heart, you're just like, what do they know? You know? Because... They weren't there. They didn't see what I was doing, right? But the reality is they probably do know, and you, you're just being biased, you know, because you were painting. Um, and then when you come back and look at it later, I mean, this is, this has happened to all of us, where you guys will look back like a, like a year-old painting that maybe you thought it was really good, and you look back at it, and you're just like, why did I ever think that painting was good, you know? <laughs> and it's just because there, you were a different person at that time, and you had different, like, you know, you had different standards, and you were living up to those standards then. And so that's why, you know, having critical feedback from other artists and talking to people and getting up and walking around and, like, looking at your artwork often, like, I mean, like, from, like, a new point of view is, like, I, I highly recommend it because if you don't do that, you're, you're really kind of, you're setting yourself up for a little bit of a disaster. Can I ask you if you can uh, paint? Uh, can I ask a request? <laughs> yeah, sure. Could you do um, like fantasy kind of armor on the head? I mean, face. Like, um, what's that called? What's the word? Uh, medieval. Like just plain armor. Plain, ar no, uh, plain armor. 
Actually, can, can I? Sorry. Hello. Can I make another request? <laughs> oh, see, you let one in. Now all of them are starting to come in. <laughs> I'm, done. I'm at least I'm interested. Yes. I, I'm doing kind of a fantasy creature. I'm doing like a sculpture for ten weeks. Oh, cool. Uh, on one class, and I have no idea what else to put. I don't know if you can like paint over. Uh, uh, probably not. Uh, maybe, maybe during the class. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I can give you some advice. Um, yes. If you don't know what else to do, uh, it's because you don't have. Uh, you weren't. You were. You were not here, but you had. Hopefully, you saw the video. But there's two things that are basically yeah. Yeah. preventing you from doing this, which is either a lack of yeah. skill or a lack of knowledge, right? And so. Uh, I bet one of these things uh, is true. I bet the knowledge part one. And so, so if I were to ask you a few questions, one one question would be: um, Do you have any reference that you're looking at while thinking about adding these features to your your sculpts? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. How, how many references do you have? Do you have like one? Do you have two? Do you have twenty? No, I, I don't know, like hundred. Okay, so so then you have all this reference, but yet you still can't come up with stuff. Yeah, I don't believe that. So that means you're so that that means you have uh, you have a reference overload. That means you have so much reference that you don't even look at it. You just got it, but you don't really care for it. You know, because if you have a hundred pieces of reference, then there really is no reason why you shouldn't be coming up with stuff, right? Watch. Let me let me give you an example. Because if you just put some thought, you will immediately understand what what you're doing wrong, okay? okay? Like how you're not really actually looking at reference. I call people like you art collectors. You collect the art, but you don't actually use it, <laughs> right? Right? Like it's really easy to collect hundred pieces of reference and feel cool about your, your life, right? Like oh man, I'm really good. I'm really good. Look at all this reference I got, and then you just like go back to whatever you're painting or sculpting without ever looking at it. That's like such a foolish thing to do. What you got to do is like, okay, ask yourself, okay, I'm looking at this this armor. What about this armor can I add to my own concept? Well, there's the scaling, there's bolts, there's riveting that looks like uh, rope, there's like uh, embroidered heart designs, there's embroidered like little kind of like hinges on the armor, you know. That's like six things that I just can't, found on one piece of reference. You see what I'm saying? And you can ask yourself, yeah. did, you, did you put bolts on your thing? Did you put these riveted uh, rope things on there? Did you put embroidered heart stuff? Did you put, like, these little scratch and indentation? <clears throat> and if the answer is no, then, well, there's a, there's a first thing you can start. There's a list of things you can start considering. And I, I use the word considering uh, pretty, pretty aggressively. Because it doesn't mean you should. It just means maybe you can't. And there's, there's no harm in trying a little bit of this, a little bit of that, right? And then, and then if you have like another reference, you're, okay, well, what about tassels? What about like this type of embroidered shapes? What about like um, insignias that have like you know faces or gods of or like um, creatures or mythological mythological creatures on the armor? You understand? Yeah. yeah. You start looking at like even this, and you say, well, do I have even half of half of my, of this image is going on in my own image. And I only looked at three references. You see what I'm saying? Like I didn't even look at a lot of references and I already have like at least 15 things that I could probably consider putting into my concept or my sculpt or whatever, right? So having hundreds of pieces of references do, do you no good if you're never really using them, right? And I mean like using them, like looking at it and saying to yourself, what can I add? And sometimes maybe writing it down is the solution. Like write down everything that you potentially have left out. Like, and then, and here's the thing, like you think, okay, well, like I have a belt, I have a belt, right? But do you, do you have a belt, you know? And, and the question then goes into like, what kind of belts can you work with? There's like all kinds of reference that, are just about like how things are attached. Like this person's using strings, you know, like rope, you know, like yeah. leather rope. That's a really interesting idea.
to contribute to your con uh, concept slash sculpt. You get it? Yeah. And yeah, I can tell you, like you just you just haven't considered this stuff, right? You you have the no, I, yeah, you know. yeah, you have That's the reference. Right, right. You're not looking at it. Like I I tell people, it's actually more valuable to have maybe like like five or six references, right? That you really use, like really, really good references that have a lot of good information in them that you really use than having one million references that you never look at. But it could be reference overload, like you just have too much reference that's not even manageable to look at, right? So maybe just look at like a few. Like it's good to have a lot of references because then you could like choose a few for today and then tomorrow look at another few, right? And not worry about the, the scavenger hunt of reference gathering, right? Because you've kind of already done that. <clears throat> so like I always say, ask yourself, are you a costume? Um, like a Halloween costume designer? Uh, no. Right? Like, we're just putting, like, the bare minimum of, like, <laughs> of, like, a Spartan. You know what I mean? Like, the bare <laughs> minimum. Yeah. Like, the most cliche version of whatever the hell you're doing. Are you just doing the bare minimum? Of like a gladiator, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's good. <laughs> you know, dude, yeah, I ought yeah. to put that in my reference. <laughs> or yeah. are you are you like fluffy film, abs? Or are you like a film costume designer, which they put a, obviously a little bit more effort than what you would expect. You know what I'm saying? Like even this, like we're we're just he pretty yeah. much is the same, right? Yeah. He, he's only wearing like he's shirtless. He's got only got buckles and some. But like look at like his um. His arm armor, that's really fucking cool, right? Versus, like, this, right? <laughs> so, so this is, to, like, whenever people say, I don't know what else to add, it's usually because they're thinking like this. They're just thinking of, like, the bare minimum versus, like, thinking. the maximum amount of effort, right? And uh, and when you have reference, like, you you got to use it. Like, don't just be like, I just, like this one little <laughs> like like no like look at the whole thing like look at like he's got he's got a statue on the back of his body on his face yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah and he's got scripture coming out of his face right out of his eyeball <laughs> <laughs> it's like like you kidding me like you can't come up with stuff and you have all that reference that's yeah like the, there's no way there's no way around that right it, it, it means you're not using your reference it has to be <laughs> Right, and, or you just have terrible reference, or you have this reference like like this. You know, you just have lots of. But I doubt that. I think, people, I think generally people have a good ability. Like I don't know. I have never met too many students that has a hard time finding good imagery. Right, almost everybody can have a. It's not too hard to find pretty great imagery, especially if you're on Pinterest. You know, it's pretty difficult to find terrible imagery. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. It's not difficult to find terrible imagery. It's it's difficult for students to Specify. only only pick yeah terrible imagery. They like, usually yeah. will have a lot of great imagery, and they're like, I don't get it. Like I got all these images I collected. And it's like, well, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Collecting images doesn't do you any good if you don't use it. You gotta like look at it. You gotta analyze it. You gotta ask yourself why did you pick that in the first place. And if you're not asking yourself these questions, then mm -hmm. that's why you're not successful, friend. You know. So hopefully that helps you out, buddy. Thanks. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I always tell people spend more time like learning and studying than you know sitting down and just mindlessly gr grinding in like artwork. If you just put a little bit of effort into what you're doing, you will see a lot of growth much faster. Mm -hmm. Unless you're Denzel, by the way, who's a yeah cat murderer. Could we try? Should we type questions or um, use the mic? Yeah, you can use the mic. Sorry. Yeah, let's let, let other people talk, guys. Come on. All right. <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm drawing uh, right now, and I'm just kind of wondering um, if I, uh, I have, like, a, a local value for uh, a part of the armor, uh -huh. and, and then I want to put some lighting on it. Um, you said something in one of your videos where you say, like, you, you stay within 30% of that local value um, yeah. sometimes. Because, yeah, I, I tend to go 
way too dark or way too light and create way too much. Uh, so I was just wondering, what's the? Do you have any guidelines on? Yeah. So uh, in one of my videos, I actually um, paint uh, my concepts like flat value, and then I'll throw in like a shadow value or a light value. I do that on purpose for the students, for you guys, because um, it's really hard to to uh, not do that if you don't have the foresight to understand that you're making mistakes, right? Um, like, you, you, to me, it sounds like you do. Like, you understand that you shouldn't be doing that, but yet you still do it. So then you have to kind of really break down why you, you do that. Like, why are you making the same mistake over and over again? Or why are you making this mistake that you, you recognize as a, a problem, right? And for me, what made it clear to me, what made it this easier for me to to translate into my own work? I like that scripture stuff. I'm gonna try to do that with this guy. That's actually a pretty fucking cool idea. Um, what what made me start to become much better at like. Um, like avoiding like problematic problems like that, problematic problems, um, was understanding that the human mind, as great as it is, is also an idiot. Right? We are we are really good at ignoring um, logical information because of our inability to process the world correctly. Because, you know, what we see in this world is all illusions, right? Like, it's our brain actually taking the information that's coming from the light, right? And then converting it into what we see. So a lot of what we see is just not even, not even um, exactly how it works in the real world, right? It's a perception of the real world. And so a lot of times when people draw too harsh shadows or too harsh lighting, that's just an exaggeration of, it's kind of like a caricature of what they know is happening in real life. Like they know like light is hitting this, so they'll like throw super light values there. But the reality is, is it that light? Yeah. Or are you just doing it because it feels right? Right? And remember, yeah, exactly. remember I, I usually tell people, don't trust your intuition unless you put some formal training into it. Because usually your intuition is going to be wrong, right? So that would be a, a good time to look at RAF or maybe yeah. study. Like what really, and start getting some, some real information. And again, remember, have a question. It's like what, what is really going on in real lighting and stuff like that. And then, and then try to solve that problem or try to answer it to either be true or to be wrong. You know, like, like how scientists work. Like scientists use the scientific method because it works it gets gets results you 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 see a, a particular like a particular situation in the world something that's going on and it's really interesting to you you don't know why you see a phenomenon right you don't understand why or how it works and what scientists will do is then come well, scientists will come up with a hypothesis basically it'll be like okay this is what I think it is you know this is what I think is going on right and then they'll test it. Uh, they'll do a lot, a lot of research, and then they'll test it. And if the test comes back like terrible, then they restructure their hypothesis. They're like, "Well, we were wrong." Okay. Um, and they'll just keep going. Or maybe the tests were not conclusive enough, so they keep doing tests until, without a reasonable doubt, you know, they they were just wrong. Right. Uh, or they could be sort of wrong. Or they could be sort of right. You know, maybe they're not a hundred percent right. You know, this is why. Uh, this, this is this is this is why. Uh, you know, the world still is kind of the way it is because people don't understand the power of science still, and they're they're kind of foolish. Um, like people who who generally just do not believe in evolution, for instance, and they they generally say to you like, "Well, it's just a theory," right? Like, as if, like, just a theory means, like, it's just an opinion. The reality is a theory is is not just an opinion. A theory 
in a lot of cases is is basically the closest thing to truth that we have today, right? It doesn't mean we have all the answers. It just means we have most of them or a lot of them or at least a few of them. Because, you know, when you look at the theory of evolution, you're like, well, well look, we don't know how this or that works. Uh, and that, that may be true. But we also use the theory of gravity to put robots on Mars, right? Because we don't, we, we just discovered gravitational waves, right? Because that was a theory by Einstein. Einstein said, look, like, based off of my theory of relativity, you know, gravity is not a force. It's absolutely a wave. But he wasn't able to prove it. He just had all these equations that said, look, the math is there. So I think it's, it's true. I think we can't. And, but science, scientists are so skeptical of each other. They're like, all right, cool, Einstein. But until we have some real evidence, you know, or some evidence proving true, we're, we're going to hold off on really using this as, as a fact. And they just recently proved it as a fact, that there is such a thing as gravitational waves. And they use a lot of Einstein's math. See, that's the difference, right? And so that if you look at something like uh, evolution, the same thing. Like, we use evolution all the time. People don't understand this, but we do. This is how we make modern medicine. This is why we test on lab rats. We wouldn't test on other animals, these, like, these medicines and these products, if there was no common ancestry, right? But because we have a common ancestry with lab uh, rats and my, mice, right? We do. We are actually more, we have a lot of things so similar to a fucking rat than we do than an ape. That's why uh, we do rats because they they are mice because they reproduce quickly, right? And they live very short lives. So we can see the parameters of, of like health effects in them that can then retain to us. And it, this has saved countless amounts of lives, you know, and. You have to understand that when you're becoming a better artist, if you think this way too, like if you try to support your art with facts, you know, I always tell people like you're allowed to have an opinion about your artwork. Like I like to draw sci-fi versus fantasy, let's say, or I like to draw fantasy versus sci-fi, whatever that may be. That That's an opinion, you know, <laughs> but anatomy, that is not an opinion, right? There is... There is something, such a thing called anatomy, and there is truth about what anatomy is. There is such a thing about material indication and, like, what met, makes metal look like metal. And so when you decide to draw metal a certain way, right, like if you decide to draw it, like, with a little bit more style, then that is definitely your choice. But it's it's going to be more believable if you know the facts. You're, so then I always tell people, try to have your, your, uh, your artwork be in theory the same way scientists look at theory. Right, which is that if I decide to draw an arm like this, although it's clearly a caricature of a realistic, realistic. of, of, of uh, real anatomy, yeah, you still know though. Enough. You can you know that this is supported you know by this is supported some facts, right? Facts, this is just right? my uh, this like this is just an objective or subjective way of drawing it. This is like Catherine style, style, right? Which again, there's there's facts there. You can say what what makes Capcom, um, like like what does make Street Fighter look like Street Fighter? There's evidence there, and you can replicate that evidence. You can draw and make it consistent, right? That's why whenever when they when the first for instance when um, Overwatch first came out, and everyone was like, oh look, it's like looks just like Team Fortress, looks just like Team Fortress. I was like, what? Who the hell? Like, and, and it wasn't like other artists. Most artists understand immediately that that's not true, because we're already we're kind of already a little bit more educated in terms of aesthetics, right? But your common yeah. man sees cartoon. They just see, oh, it looks like a cartoon. Yeah. You know. And like, if you don't if you don't pay attention to the nuances, then it's easy to say that they yes they are exactly the same, sure, but they're not, because Team Fortress was heavily influenced by stuff like um, old like noir style art specifically inspired by Linedecker with hints of um, you know noir style uh, 50s type of art deco appeal 
And a lot of that was also inspired by, you know, The Incredibles. Yeah. But if you look at Overwatch, Overwatch is nowhere near that. It's more along the lines like Street Fighter. Like, they're, mm. they're more like on the Udon spectrum of artistic style. And and it's proven more factually true. What is true. Udon, by the way? It's just a company. It's like a group of people, artists that draw. And so, oh. or it's a noodle. It's like a rice noodle, depending on what you're referring to. <laughs> um, so, you no, know. I think it was the art, the art uh, group. Okay. Um, so if you start to, to analyze the world the way that I, I like to say, like scientifically, as an artist, you, you become a lot more reliable on what you can and what you cannot draw. Yeah? So, mm -hmm. uh, checker board illusion. So this is one of my favorite illusions to show people. Because it's about values. Mm. So, <clears throat> A and B. This is a great example. If you look at A and B, right, you guys see that? A and B? You are convinced that B is a lighter shade, right? It's white. Or a lighter gray versus a darker gray. Yeah. But, but what makes it hard for you to see is that B and A are actually the same value. Yep. They're literally the same value. Now, B is, yes, a lighter checker in a shadow. But because our brain sees the shadow going over B and it sees the pattern of the checkerboard and it recognizes that at this point the B is a light gray. So our brain will say it's a light gray intuitively. And it's right. It has to be because we would be we would not be able to navigate this world if we had a, a different way of thinking about things, right? But this is also the problem to why artists cannot separate this idea and end up drawing B lighter than it they should have. You understand? Because mm -hmm. A and B are the same value. And understanding why this is true. See that? Crazy. <laughs> Understanding why this is true will make you a better artist. It'll make you control your values better, which will say, will, will allow you to say things or do things that will prevent you from making these mistakes. And here's the funny thing. When I get rid of it, your brain is right back to where it was. Like, even though, yeah. even though you know now for a fact that they're the same value, your brain still doesn't care. Stupid right? God damn it. Yeah, so that's why I don't trust your intuition. Because <laughs> your intuition is probably wrong. Okay? Here's another great one. And this is about shapes. These table, the, 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 the frame of this table is identical to the other one in terms of shape and size and proportion. What I mean by this is that this table is not longer and this table is not taller. They're exactly the same. All right, I'm going to show you. Hopefully I got Oh, crap. Do that on, on, on accident. I need to make a layer. Whoops. All right. So all I'm going to do is just rotate this and reposition this. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> all I'm going to do Magic. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best reaction I've had. This <laughs> OMG. Right, there you go. What the fuck? See? Anyway. And and even though I turned that off, 
your brain is back to where it was. Even though now yeah. you know for a fact that they're not different, they're actually the same, right? It's because of perspective, yeah. It's like perspective cues. And this is, again, why people, whenever they draw perspective, they usually get their scale wrong because they don't understand what's really going on. You understand? So when you become an artist, you really are becoming a master of illusions because you have to convince other people, too, what they're looking at is real, right? And and what you draw, what you're drawing, whenever you're painting, let's say like this thing right here, right? Like what a common problem I would see artists do, well, they'll make this checker lighter and then they'll make this checker darker. And that immediately, right, you agree, looks wrong. Yep. Because we're like, oh, well, this is a shadow. I better make it darker. And so that's why I created a system for, for a lot of you artists that can't get past these, these illusions. You, you still trust your intuition, even though I've proven to you shouldn't. <laughs> like, I tell them, make one layer and just paint that, like, however opaquely black you want it to be. And just turn it down a notch. Right? And that's, that's going to be a more reliable and more consistent way of keeping your lights and shadows separate. You know what I mean? I just do it by, I just yeah. do it by hand now because I, I know, I can see what I'm doing. You know, I can compare my values more objectively. Before I couldn't, now I can't, right? But this is a good way to kind of get you to, to stop making those mistakes and slowly get your brain to understand what you're, you're painting and drawing at a more factual level. What magic is it? And, and the 30% stuff that you were asking about specifically is just within the local value of the shadows. So let's say you want to like add like some indents and cuts, right? That's what you do because this is like 30% within here. You understand? Because if I would take this value as it is and bring it over here, look how absolutely dark that is. Oh, man. And it's crazy, right? Because you think, well, this is still actually lighter, isn't it? No, there's the same value. You see that? So what would I That's do? That's a perfect explanation. Thanks. If, if I wanted to to do the same thing here, I would do the same. That. Like, so if I wanted to implicate like the same kind of like now, if you look at these, right, they feel like they feel accurate, right? Like this feels like the same kind of crack and indentation that's happening on this side that's in the shadow, because I've followed this simple idea of thirty percent. Or you could just do it like you could do it cleverly and just paint whatever indentation you wanted, right? And then just turn it down. Right? Okay. Because that's consistent. You're not relying on your intuition to be able to count on that. Like, this is going to do it for you. Right? And so, uh, someone's like, do that again. I'll do it again. So this, <laughs> this, this thing right here, this shadow, like, I could put it, like, right as close as I possibly can to each other and you still won't believe it. <laughs> Right? Like, they're literally, like, right next to each other, aren't they? And you still, like, you still, because of that, like, white line, or that light, lighter value, you still are having a hard time. And if I just move them away from that, there's no confusion. Less is more. Uh, no, I, w I would say, uh, I would say accuracy and understanding. <laughs> Less is more is just more of an abstract idea and like maybe like designing and stuff. Uh, I have a but, question. But you could you could definitely get compli complicated with your lights and forms and still make it look nice and appealing. So just just understand why the world looks. Uh, I would say a better way of thinking about it is it's a lot simpler than you might suspect it. Right? You might think things are a lot more complicated. Like I always tell people that everyone understands how light works. Like most people understand how to light how to set up lighting. Lighting is actually not very difficult. What's difficult is painting forms. Like, mm -hmm. it's easy to say, if I were to draw a cube, I don't think anyone would get this wrong. And if you do, then, then maybe it is hard for you. But I doubt it. If a light source is coming from the top, which of these sides is going to be lit by the, the light source? C. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that was a joke. He meant to say yes, it, it was. <laughs> right? If I were to say it's coming from this diagonal, 
point of view? What which which sides will be lit? A B. Yeah, right. Like it's not a trick question. Like it, you guys are. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna. <laughs> this is another, no, it's like it's fucking that simple. Like wherever the light's coming from, and whatever sides are facing that light are going to be lit, and everything else is going to be in shadow. It's like literally that simple. But the problem is that when people are like painting, they're like, my light is coming from. Let's say this is like some sort of. Uh, let's do a cube. Let's do a cube again. All right, let's do a cube again. And then they're saying light is coming from from let's say the side or from the from the same angle as I was showing earlier. Uh, hold on though. Okay. So they say light is coming from this angle. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now, this is what students would do. They'll paint. Okay, let me darken the background. They'll paint like this. Why? Why the fuck are you painting like that? And then they'll paint the shadows like this. Like, how, in what world does this make any sense? Right? And then a lot of you guys are like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's exactly how I do my lights and shadows. It's because you're not looking at the three-dimensional form. Like, you're, you've completely ignored, like, when we put the, the wireframe on there, it makes no sense what I just did, right? It's like, what was I thinking? Like, why would the shadow all of a sudden be over there? Like, what the hell? Like, it would be, like, right over here, right? And then this would be lit, and then this would be lit. And that's, like, almost immediately way more accurate, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. whenever you're drawing, like, like, crazy shapes, but you don't have any three-dimensional understanding of that shape, that's what's going to screw you up. It's not the lighting. It's that you don't understand what you're lighting. Yeah. So fix this problem. That's why I always tell people, fo focus on your forms before you really consider doing anything. Contours. Huh? Like yeah, if you just did like whole contour. Exactly. Like whenever people paint their, their thumbnails <clears throat> or their silhouettes or their sketches or whatever, they're usually not painting their forms accurately. And that's why your lighting looks like garbage because you're lighting a paper cut out of a character, not like a real person or character. You're like painting literally like a, a paper mache version of your character. You're not really considering the, the form of it. All right. Yep. There's, there's like one last question. I'll answer that question. No, oh, I have a question. All right. Uh, about poses in the characters. So, for example, when you're starting to design one, uh, do you put him in a T pose or in a dynamic pose? Uh, because I, both I, they have. Oh, you mean like 3D? Like uh, their advantages. Uh, no, just uh, starting to construct a character. So you're oh, showing him just the costume or his character too. I mean, his personality that he's sneaky or he's. Because you can make an interesting character with poor design cost. Uh, uh, yes, costume design. Uh, <clears throat> but if you put him in a cool pose, that might sell it. Uh, yeah, but why not have a cool costume and a cool pose, right? But uh, the pose is an illustrative, yeah, but, uh, illustrative point of view. Like, you have to ask yourself what the objective of the, the artwork is. If the artwork is supposed to be like an illustration where illustration um, is the final product, you understand? So having a yeah. character just like slightly posed, might not be the might, might not be worth it, right? Like if you look at like a lot of like card art and illustrations or like splash art for like MOBAs and stuff, like it's super dynamic and really epic and cool, right? Because that's that's the final product. That is the product. Is the actual artwork itself. But concept art, uh, in its nature, isn't supposed to 
be the finished product. It's supposed to help build the finished product. Yeah, yeah, I know, but uh, if you're in a blue sky period, then the producer asks you, come on, give some of those ideas uh, if uh, this character can be any class. What, what is your approach? Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like you have to ask yourself, what's more important? Well, you have a control. Yeah, is it more important to design the personality of the character, or is it more important to design the the costume? Like you just got to ask yourself. Like I, I, that's not an easy answer to or a question to answer. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> because because it, it it it's all contextually based. Like it ha there's no way for me to say, oh, you should always do it this way. Because what if like they just want costumes? Like what if you're working on a, a a MMO and they just need armor sets. It makes no sense then to pose it, right? Like, why would mm -hmm. you pose armor? Depends on what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, um, but like, let's say you're working on an animated film where you know you're probably not going to have super high, crazy, epic statue armor on the top of this guy's head. So you know, designing the poses make more sense because you're really you're designing, you're trying to find literally the character, right? Mm -hmm. um, so. And there's you know and there's a combination of two like maybe you're designing a, a game or a movie where you don't know at all if the character's costume or the character's personality so maybe doing them in tandem like doing them together is valuable too, right? And yeah. so, you, so it's just more sketches. <laughs> yeah, but but there's there's something to be said is that no matter what, you you're doing a lot of drawings. Yeah. Right. Regardless of whatever you're doing, it's also and, a good and it, do it. yeah, so. and it, it could be a combination of both. Like you could be doing just like like for instance, I'm doing these helmets, right? But like I can mm -hmm. easily just like take one of these helmets. Let's say this one up here, since it's closest to me. I'll do this one on the right, and do like an illustrative version of it. to try to sell the concept or do a 3D version of it. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? It would be better if I pose it a little better. Like, and then have some people in the background too. You know, and but at this point, it's like I've already kind of done the design, so it's like it's not really as difficult as if I had to design and pose it. That's like, and a lot of you guys are not prepared to do stuff like that anyway, so I would highly re recommend against it. Do you find it harder to work from something that you've already designed, whereas just to completely make a new design? Uh, it's equally difficult because <laughs> I've trained myself to do it. I think it's easier to work from, uh, it's easier, obviously, to work from nothing. Yeah. Because there's no strings Starting attached. Point. Yeah. yeah. But that won't get you anywhere in any kind of production if you can't re replicate your own drawing. Mm -hmm. But it's not too difficult. You just got to check your balances. Just go back and forth and just look at it and just say, oh, I forgot to add this feature. And then the more you draw your character, the better you get at understanding it. And maybe you can, like, add more dimension that you didn't have before. You know what I mean? I feel you. But, yeah, like, to answer your question, like, you know, uh, I don't really... I don't worry about that. I worry about um, the problem-solving aspect of the task. <laughs> like, what do I have to solve? What's the problem that needs to be solved? And how do I do it? And sometimes I might do like this, and then my director will say, pose it. And I say, okay, I'll pose it. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I will pose a character, and, and my director says, don't pose it. Just, just, just find the costume. You know, like that's kind of part of like the blue sky experience anyway. Is where you, everybody kind of understands that we're just exploring. There's no, there's no law to follow, and if there is, it's kind of silly. I'd say like limitations are good, in terms of like, like especially in the beginning, like broad limitations, like maybe like, you know, 
the limitation that is is bestowed upon me is like you know um, that it's sci-fi or it's fantasy or it's like a tinky character you know but we don't know yet what kind of tinky character we don't know what kind of you know and then as you start to establish rules like because I've worked on like I think if I had to choose I like working for a company that has very strict limitations but a lot of creative freedom mm. Like, I like working for a company that has a really good understanding of what they want, but um, they are open to interpretation. It sounds, like, very vague, but, like, a good example of this would be, like, when I was working on God of War, where it was clearly Greek. There's no real – there's nothing that I could do differently, right? Um, I can all of a sudden just start drawing, you know, like – sci-fi lasers and stuff right i had to it clearly had to be greek but they're cool with how i went about it like it didn't really matter aside from like certain things like kratos's blades and stuff like that but like but like you know new characters like as long as it felt cool right and that's a lot of fun because those limitations allow you they, they free up your 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 ability or your your inability to get started because you already have something that you need, you know what you need to do. StarCraft the same thing like working on the StarCraft cinematic like I had to just redesign the Protoss units. It's, it's like to, the way that I experienced it, it was it felt like doing really official fan art. Right? Cuz I was already a fan of the game. Oh. And then so like doing the Star like redesigning the the Zealot and the High Templar was like it was awesome. Because it's like I love the game, I love these characters, and right. so I'm just redesigning them to make them look more cinematic, and I'm just like upgrading their armor, and it was fun. The limitations was great, like it was a good limitation, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, like I like to just draw whatever the hell I like, but I do that for my personal work, because then there's no, you know, there's no objection, right? The limit is nice. Yeah, and I'm not reporting to anybody, so if it's bad, then it's bad. It's fine. It's my work. I don't care. You know? Yeah. And so the freedom of being bad in that aspect is great. Because if you have an open open book when you're working on a project and you don't know whether it's good or bad, and you're, every time you show it to somebody, they're just like, I don't know, this is terrible. Uh, like, right now I'm working on three different projects, and one project is like that, where it's just like, like whatever, dude, just do whatever. But it's got to be cool. It's like I hate that, man. It's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard because what cool when you means have to them. Up, it's like, what do I choose from? Yeah, what cool means to them doesn't might not mean the same for me. And so I, I just constantly am like, like at arms, like with this, this, this project because I just don't, I have no clue, like what they want. Because I showed something to them, and it could be what they wanted, and they keep saying, well, it's got to be cool, you know, like, think something that no one's ever seen before. And I'm like, dude, you must understand that that's not a very easy piece of, um, you must understand that this is not a very easy piece of criticism to work with. Because I can draw a donkey flying a uh, unicorn shooting chainsaws out of a squirt gun. And that and technically is something that people have not seen before. But is that cool? Yes, it is cool. And some people <laughs> would consider that cool. I mean, people like the Nana Cat, whatever the... The freaking cat, the, cat. The, ra <laughs> the rainbow coming out of his butt, and it's made out of toast. Like, there's like literally billions of views of that thing. So clearly, <laughs> people <laughs> like it. And it's something that no one's seen before. But is that what we want? You know, it's like, you got to be a little more specific. I understand we want to try to invent something that's really interesting, really new, really creative, and really cool, but we have to be a little bit more, we have to start putting some limitations that will allow us to do this. This is what happened with Project Titan at Blizzard, why it failed, because they had no limitations. But when they worked on Overwatch, they had all the limitations in the world, and they made a great game. Yeah. So so having having limits, but the ability to to... to open a dialogue about what those limits can be is better, in my opinion. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, because, like, if you think about, like, League of Legends, they were, they were constrained in the limits like of, see. they were constrained in the limits of the, the Dota, right? Like, which was built in Warcraft Editor. 
right? Mm-hmm. The game that I was talking about last class, like Geometry Dash, it's built in the limits that you only have one button that you can press, and you only go to the right, and everything kills you if you touch it, right? And that game yeah. has so much versatility. I was watching some of the more advanced players play some of the more advanced levels, and I was like, what in the world? It, it is like a clusterfuck of information and things streaming at you. I was like, how can anybody just like immediately understand what's going on? It just looks like a hurricane of stuff. But I, I understand I understand how that can happen. You just play the game enough, and you see all the different obstacles, and then eventually, at that point, you've already seen everything. And now it's just mm-hmm. putting it in such a complicated way that you have to really play and test your wits to the game. You know? So yeah. so getting back to kind of that question, though, uh, for me, it all depends. It really just depends. Okay? I would say get good at everything. Get good at posing your characters. Get good at designing them um, just really well. You know? Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, don't be limited. Don't be like, oh, I only have to do all my characters T pose because AJ says that I should do T pose characters. It's like, no, man, never just do that. And like, there's times where I like to just pose my characters, even if I'm designing them. I think like a slight pose is cool. Like d- designing a pose where they're like kind of like doing what their do- like their personality is. Like you know, like if they're a little yeah. bit slouching or they're standing up straight and strong or they're a little bit like you know conniving you know like that 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 doesn't hurt the concept don't do like a crazy overlapping kind of dynamic pose where like you can't see half of the design because it's like the torso is like lost and for sh- shortening right um yeah. unless that's the illustration right but like if you're just designing like if you're just designing like if you keep doing it what sorry i was just gonna say if you keep doing that like maybe it'll come more naturally as time goes on you could just Put in a pose, and it won't be a problem. Yeah, I think uh, just drawing a lot is gonna happen, anyways. And just being a versatile artist is what you should strive for. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna stop class now. Okay. It was a good class. Good right. talks today. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys will all become vegan by the end of this class. We'll see. <laughs> Oh, AJ, I have I'm one really good <laughs> I would suggest just eating more fruits and vegetables, uh, more plant-based foods. Don't forget, like, potatoes, beans, rice, pasta. There's, like, there's actually quite a bit of food that you can eat that you didn't realize was just fine. Um, just don't put the bacon on there. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Um, what was the question before I end the class officially? Um, what level vegan are you? Uh, full, full on, pretty much. I, uh, I don't eat any, uh, animal products of any kind, even honey. Which is, uh, what about bee maple vomit. Honey? What? Maple honey. Oh, maple syrup? Maple honey of trees. Oh, that, that's fine. Yeah, syrup. Yeah. yeah maple syrup's good. Yeah, no animal. Okay. No, I'm not saying I don't eat any living thing because that would be impossible. Then I just like pretty much can't eat. I'll just cricket. die. <laughs> I mean, everyone eats crickets, you know. <laughs> yeah, like I um, just no animal you can based use photosynthesis. Yeah, like if you think about it, um, the ultimate vegan would be the vegan that has solar panel skin, right? Because uh, the reason we eat, like if you think about it, all of our energy is from the sun. All of it. Mm-hmm. Every everything you can imagine in terms of energy, even our fossil fuels, is just old school plants that have just been like you know brewing and turned into coal and oil, right? Like, but plants, what do they do? They they literally eat sunlight, right? They convert it using photosynthesis, and then they turn that sunlight into glucose, which is sugar, and then we eat that sugar, which then goes and we convert that glucose into the, uh, I think it's fructose, or actually we turn fructose to glucose, one of those two. And we turn that shit into energy that we can use to repair our body, to wake up and move around, right? Because mm-hmm. um, remember, you know, you know, you, there's, this, there's this weird thing going around that carbohydrates are bad, but the reality is carbohydrates is like the staple of our fucking metabolism. Like our body loves carbs. That's why if, no matter how much steak you eat, you still crave like some sugary 
food, right? Like you want something like uh, like some candy or like a soda, right? Even like barbecue yeah. sauce has sugar in it, tons of sugar. Tomato, like uh, ketchup has sugar in it. In fact, milk has more sugar in it than – or it has almost as much sugar in it than um, some sodas. Milk, right? I remember, like, one of our friends, we were you telling them. We, soya milk? Yeah, we were telling our friends, like, we drink soy milk uh, or almond milk. And she's like, oh, I don't want to have all that sugar, though. And I was like, uh, almond milk has, like, no sugar. <laughs> and milk has, like, 13 grams of sugar. It literally has twice as much sugar as almond milk. Your argument oh. is clearly flawed. You don't know what you're eating, lady, you know? <laughs> yeah. and so And so, anyway, um, but if you think about, like, plants, like, going back to the whole plant thing, like, yeah, they eat. They eat sunlight, and then we eat the plants, right? And then uh, mm-hmm. we we basically get that preserved energy, and we use it in our uh, our vehicles and our machineries, our electronics. You know, we, we use it all yeah. the time, and and we're eventually we're, we finally realize why don't we just get it straight from the fucking sun? You know, <laughs> like even even wind energy is from sunlight, is from the heat from the sun, like. Messing with the, the the temperatures of the planet and like creating wind, yeah, it's like everything. Literally, if the sun was not there, our planet would have no energy. We would have to use the energy from the heat of our core. That would be the only place we can get it. You know. Well, one last question: Is soy milk a lot of estrogen, and is it bad for no, guys to eat? No, that's not true either. That's a myth, right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's not true. So anyway, because you know you have a whole culture of people who eat nothing but soy, which is pretty much all the Asian cultures. Because what is tofu? What is edamame? Like that's literally soy. It's just it's just not true. Oh, sorry. And so anyway, um, and so yeah, going going back to like this uh this problem that uh like with animal eating is that we eat animals because they have pretty much all that stuff stored into them because they eat plants too. What are they eating? They're eating the plants that we should be eating. Right? Yeah. We feed them the food that we could be eating. In fact, uh, it was said that if we were to stop, like, if everyone all of a sudden decided, you know what, yeah, why don't we like do something about all this stuff we're doing to our health, to our environment, and to these poor animals? Uh, let's let's just all stop. Let's just do it. Let's just like build a more efficient way of feeding everybody in the planet. And the, the, if that happened, um, all the food that we yeah. would feed the animals would be enough to feed the world twice over. Yeah, I it, heard that too. It would actually or like it would solve if we stop the milk. If we stop the milk company, uh, or not the milk company, um, how they're producing milk and stuff from cows, if that completely stopped, uh, like we would have so much more money and we'd be able to feed a lot more people. Yeah, because uh, there's 56 billion animals, 56 billion with a B, with a yeah. B, animals that we feed and slaughter uh, yearly. And yeah. that number is growing because of the demand, because China is now starting to get a taste for meat. And that's, that's going to be big, that's going to be... Bad news. And China has other problems to worry about, too. They get, it, they get their fucking smog shit checked. They need to get that solar energy right away. And so, so yeah, I mean, you start doing the math. You start realizing, even if even if we said, you know, we made and breeded animals that didn't give us all these chronic diseases, right? It's just not, it's just not sustainable. Like, we're just not going to be able to survive on this, this type of system that we've built, you know? And we, we, we all, uh, people are, like, the, the population of people that are slowly realizing this is growing, you know? Like, people are starting to understand that we're eating bad, uh, but more importantly, they're understanding the economic or the ethical issues that are go along with it, which is we're destroying our planet, because we have to, that's like, uh, John, the, our producer, he's, he's doing it mostly for ethical reasons on the, the planet-destroying side, because he, he realized, because I was showing this documentary, about cowspiracy, you should, you should watch it. Yeah, um, I watched it. He, he that's after that, yeah, after that, it. he realized he's like, oh my god, that's like, that's, there's no way around not knowing that that's true. That where the the amount of animals that we have to keep alive, the amount of land to make to keep those animals alive, then to slaughter, is what really is causing most of our climate change, because yeah, we're destroying rainforests to create fields for animals to either live on or fields mm-hmm. to make food for the animals that we eventually eat later. And that is tremendous amount. That has a tremendous toll on our carbon 
footprint. And then, um, and then the, the transportation of that food is then exponentially grown, you know, because now yeah. you have all these like trucks, like just going cross countries, across uh, the world. And it just starts to add up guys. Right. So, I mean, if you, if you are one of those people that are advocates for climate change, that's another good reason where you should probably reduce your meat intake. Um, because mm -hmm. you're, you are actually uh, causing more harm. Like, if you were to to take like one minute showers, um, you reuse the water that you've made, even or used. Uh, if you were to never use electricity, like only have one light bulb in your whole house, turn your computer off every five hours or something. You know, if you were one of those types of people that are like, I'm trying to do my part to reduce the carbon footprint. You know, did you know that all that mm -hmm. is like the equivalent to just not eating? Like, if you did that for, like, a month, I think it was, it's, like, equivalent to, like, not eating one steak. So, basically, if you want to be, <laughs> if you want to have that same kind of, like, impact, just don't eat one steak, like, one that day, and then you would have reduced the amount of water that was moving. Would you, would you? Cowspiracy. Just watch it. And then, like, you can, and all that stuff is sourceable, so you can go and look at their own sources. And it's funny because all these uh, environmentalists, the the guy who did it, he's an environmentalist. He was pissed, dude. He couldn't believe it. Yeah. He was like, because he was doing that. He was doing all that kind of stuff. And he felt, realized he really wasn't doing shit, you know? And um, and even the people that fight these, like the, the big environmentalist companies, are actually lobbied and funded by, guess what? The meat industry. Yeah. Because they don't want people to know. Wow. And when you when you follow the money, then you start to realize there's there's some real issues, right? Think about it, America, specifically America. We have one of the highest obesity rates in the world. We have one of the highest chronic diseases in the world, and yet we have m one of the most successful um, like approach to health, right? We have so many fitness centers. We have so many like fitness videos, fitness gurus, gurus yet people are getting fatter and sicker still, mm -hmm. right? We have more, like, the, yeah. the fitness industry is growing, and so is obesity. How is that fucking possible? And then if you look at the medical side of it, we are pouring billions of dollars into medic, medical expenses and cures for these diseases, like cancer and, and uh, diabetes and Alzheimer's. But yet, diabetes mm -hmm. and Alzheimer's, it's increasing. How the fuck is this possible? Yeah. Like, we're, we're spending all this money and we're putting all this attention, and yet we're getting all these problems because guess what? The pharmaceutical industry would be de destroyed if everybody was healthy all of a sudden because you have to be just sick enough that you're not dead so that you could pay for your medical bills because healthy, healthy people don't need to go to the hospital for, for medicine. You understand? And guess what? Corrupted. Yeah, yeah. And so guess what? Like, all, if you start following the money, you start looking at this health fitness industry. What is what is the health fitness like? A lot of these like bodybuilder people do. What do they say? They say, "Hey, you got to get your protein." And where do you get your protein? Exactly. Right. Yeah. And the reality is that 300 calories of kale has almost double the amount of calories of one, 300 calories of chicken. So what the fuck is that about, like, protein-wise? It's like, protein, there's more protein in, in spinach and kale than, than there is in chicken per calorie. <clears throat> so that whole argument is, is false, that you have to go to get it from your uh, your meat, right? And so mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's if you just start following the, if you, you guys, like, you guys are listening to this, and I know you guys are, like, sensible people, reasonable people, you can just start thinking about it just from that aspect alone and start to realize, yeah, you know what? Maybe I've been fucking myself and I haven't even thought about it. You don't even think about what you're putting in your mouth, right? Like, we all knew hot dogs weren't good for us, right? Yeah. But have you guys really looked into what's actually in a hot dog? Because you like guys, I'm sure day. all of you guys have eaten enough hot dogs. Then yeah, pig this are right? in there. Yeah, pig butts are in there. Like pig assholes. Are in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and nails and shit. Oh yeah. So basically, it's whatever's shit. left over, whatever is yeah. left over from the slaughterhouse. Yeah. And so, oh. 
That's why sometimes when you bite into it and you have that like crunch and that probably nail. <laughs> I never had it's that. Crusty, Luckily for me, I have never had that. My hot dog experiences have always been very pleasant. It's a, they've always been very pleasant, but now I don't eat it because I, I realize I'm a lot more. Because when you eat broccoli, right? Like you, there's it's broccoli. <laughs> when you eat an apple, it's it's an apple. You eat an orange, it's an orange. You eat like a, a, a celery, it's celery. Beans, are beans. Uh, rice is rice. You know what I mean? Like, um, but even meat. Like you don't, you don't really know what they fed the animal. You don't know, um, like, what kind of hormones that they pumped into this animal. You don't, yeah, like, you if really you're eating that. bad shit, then you're eating bad shit. I mean, you can grow your own. It's, it's sustainable to even grow in your own fruits and vegetables, right? It really is. Uh, for for mo Not a lot of people, for mm -hmm. but for people that live in California and they have a patio or backyard, you can totally do it. At least, like, some of the more easier uh, vegetables, right? But, you know, there's farmer markets, which that's what they do. They do grow fresh produce. You can just go there and get it there if you want. Um, so if you just start thinking about it, you start thinking about our, our, our situation on this planet, and if you really care about your health, I would highly recommend you guys consider this, these things that I've talked about today. Um, and it, it will actually make you a better artist too, you know, aside from just like the, the whole kind of peachy part of all this. Like, it really will make you a better artist because you'll have a lot more energy. You'll have a lot more focus. You'll have a lot more blood flowing through your heart and through your brain um, because your arteries, hopefully, will be less plaqued. And by the way, uh, if you are, if you were 10 years old, or if you're, if you're not, I'm sorry, if you're 10 years old in this class today, anyone in here 10 years old? I'm assuming no. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you're not 10 years old, then it's not about uh, preventing these diseases. It's about reversing it. You already got them. Okay? You might not see it until you're in your 30s or you're in your 40s, but you've already got it. You've already got these, these terrible things happening in your body. So it's not about reversing it anymore, I'm sorry to say. You have to, um, you have to start to... Oh, I'm sorry, it's not about preventing. It's about reversing that. You guys understand? We're all fucked already. <laughs> we were all already terribly fucked. I'm only 32, and I was diagnosed with like pre-diabetes, and I and had terrible energy spikes, and I was always feeling like crap, and I was I had a gut and everything too, slowly coming in, and I was working out, and I thought I was eating lean chicken and like foods, and I just was not. Nothing was working. Until I switch, yeah. like the ultimate. I, I, I'm having problems at night waking up. Also, uh, yeah, try it, man. You might be surprised. Feel like you're, yeah, almost. I'm gonna go outside and run right now. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, you know, I, I decided to drop out the class because I, I need to realize, I need to live my life. I realize. Like, I was thinking about this. The day, like, just told me that I'm dying. <laughs> 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 this is a very yeah. morbid class. <laughs> He just told me that we're all on the deck. Yeah. yeah, I would say, um, I would say, okay, here, here's a few shows that you guys should watch to just, just to get your uh, minds going. There was one called Forks and Knives. That's yes. a good one. And then Cowspiracy. These are both on Netflix. And then I would also have you guys Google these these doctors, Doctor Gregor. He has he's the one that I was talking about uh, that has all the YouTube videos you can watch. They're great. Uh, Dr. Mm. McDougal, I think it's. Can you guys hear me? You can go to Ted. Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Yeah, can. And then Dr. Okay. Barnard. They both have TED Talks, Dr. McDougal and Dr. Bar Barnard. Watch their TED Talks. Dr. Gregor has like a, uh, a one hour, like, it's called, like, How to Prevent. Or, oh, no, he doesn't say. It's like 16 uh, of the leading causes of death in America. And like all sixteen of them are like diet related diseases. Yeah. And he says the top sixteen diseases in America are the all caused by diets. And um, he said it's funny because he said the six the sixth leading cause of di uh, deaths was um, uh, misdiagnosis and bad prescriptions, basically overdosing on the wrong drugs. Okay. And so basically, he said doctors are the sixth leading cause of deaths in America. And he, he's like, I'm the least. <laughs> I'm the cause of death. 
I'm the sick leader. And he like kind of makes a joke about it. It's funny, but like, but the, it's not that funny if you really think about it. That means your doctor actually might be killing you too. So, um, yeah, watch those and then uh, you know have an opinion about it. You know, or be a little bit try to be objective. And uh, I don't. I would not recommend you guys going cold turkey. I, I ironically, or cold cold cucumber. Because I'm vegan, I guess. And then, uh, <laughs> because uh, it's not sustainable. The same way that I teach you guys how to become good artists is usually by creating small habits that build up over time. Like, I won't say, like, you know, just go for, like, a seven, every fucking day, seven hours, paint and draw, like, no no play. That doesn't work. Nobody can maintain that habit, yeah. right? But if I tell you, like, if you spend half an hour or an hour a day just drawing something that you like, that is maintainable. That's sustainable. And it's the same thing. Like, just try to reduce. Like, maybe uh, they, there's a popular uh, way that people start is called Meatless Mondays, where they don't eat any meat at all on Mondays. Um, there's one. It's a raw till four diet, which is basically only eat raw foods. And if you do that, you won't eat raw meat. I, I assure you, because if you realize it, you, you can't eat meat raw because it might fucking kill you, right? <laughs> well, yeah. you start thinking about it. You don't even like the taste of meat if you don't cook it, season it with plants, right? <clears throat> and so uh, the raw to four diet is like a vegan diet, but you can apply it to a regular standard diet. Just don't eat anything um, that's not raw. So like fruits, vegetables, it'll be most of your diet in the beginning until 4 o'clock. Then you can have whatever you want to eat, I guess, you know? And that alone will be like like substantial. It's like crazy how much you'll see. Uh, in terms of uh, your health. Uh, av avoiding processed foods is an obvious one. Everybody agrees with this, whether you eat meat or not, right? Like, just try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, if you live near a place that sells food, like Chipotle is a great place. I love Chipotle because all of their food is uh, well-prepared and well-managed, except for their meats because people got Ebola. Not Ebola, sorry, E. coli. <laughs> but yeah, dude, you get the sofritas. Yeah, but there's a. I got a. I usually. I don't even get the sofritas. I just get uh, rice beans, uh, the fajitas. Um, I get corn, and then I get all the sauces on the side, and I get guacamole. Uh, they don't charge you for the guacamole if you don't get any meat. Really? Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Life hack. Life change. Is that a life hack? And check this out. <laughs> let me let me teach you guys something. If you guys like to go to Chipotle, for those of you who can, for the, my, our international students that don't have that, I'm sorry. Chipotle's off. Awesome. Hopefully, one day will come to you. Who's Kagi Bunchi no Jutsu? <laughs> yeah. So Chipotle hack. This is what you do. Try it. You go there. You say, Hey, uh, I want a burrito bowl. Yeah. And then you say, Can I get uh, brown rice, black beans? But you say, can I get extra brown rice and extra black beans? They'll give it to you for free. And then you say, okay, fajitas and corn and then uh, whatever salsa you prefer. You get those on the side if you want the salsa, so you can you can dip it in yourself manually. Sometimes they, you know, because they sometimes overload it. Like it's just like covers the whole thing. Um, and then you get the guacamole on there or on the side, your preference. And all that will cost about seven bucks, right? But you can also ask for two tortillas. They won't charge you for two tortillas. And you technically have two servings because that's enough to serve yourself twice. And that was a lot of information. Hold on. So that's, that's what I do. And it's like eight bucks for like two yeah. meals. But if you do that's what I did, which is I buy my own tortillas, so then I get like wheat tortillas or spinach tortillas. And then when you go home, you just have like, even cheaper of a meal, and you get like smaller tortillas, so you have a smaller proportion. You don't need to eat all that food, but you can if you want. Um, and I have three meals, so now my meals are only like three dollars or two and a half dollars. Wait, like I missed two, the whole tortilla thing. Two dollars and fifty cents. I, I said buy your own tortillas, so that when you go home, you you can have as many as you'd like. You can ah. serve yourself three times or four times, right? And then just put that's the rest great. in the refrigerator and eat later. So that's what I did in the beginning because I didn't know what else to do. Because I didn't know, I was like still trying to figure out what to eat, right? But now, like, as I'm a lot more seasoned, and you, you know, as things are with time, you get better at it, right? You start to understand what you can and cannot. Eat. And uh, how come you don't get the uh, sofritas? You don't like tofu? It, it's processed. Like I said, uh, like the more I can avoid processed foods, uh, the better. 
It's it's not like it's 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 better for you than most for sure, right? But it's like if I can't avoid it, like it really doesn't. To be honest, the only thing that gives that the burritos flavor is the beans and the salsa and the guac. That's like the meat is seasoned with like lots of peppers to give it some fucking flavor. But if you can get the peppers from the salsa, and then the beans give you that substance of like you're eating some like some some food, right? And so does the rice. You know, and the tortilla does like a uh, help. Yeah, a lot. I'm gonna try this by the way because I have chipotle right in my house. Yeah, especially if you have uh, wheat. Wheat tortillas are fucking amazing. They're way better uh, for you too. Unless you're allergic to gluten, then I would say, all right, well, then stick with the corn tortillas, I guess. But even corn tortillas, I think, have gluten in them. Like if you have celiac yeah. disease, if you're like one of those very rare, rare people that have celiac disease, then you have to be cautious of that type of stuff. Because your your diet will then dramatically shift to eating more foods like this that have gluten in it. Um, but if you eat mostly fresh and raw, like you avoid it. Like you know, when you have celiac disease, people who have celiac disease, although it's a very terrible disease, they end up becoming some of the healthiest people on this planet because everything they they eat can't is like mostly all the stuff that they can't eat is processed usually, you know, and so they kind of are forced to eat fruits and vegetables and plant-based foods, you know? They, like, whether they like it or not, have to become mostly vegan, you know? Yeah. And so, um, so, it's, like, unfortunate but fortunate kind of thing. Like, there's this uh, great TED Talk about this girl who has it, who she, she basically started just juicing and all of her problems went away. My, my daughter uh, has, like, uh, gluten allergies. We didn't know that until we switched her to the vegan diet because her skin was really fucking bad. And then we switched her over, and now her skin's cleared up. And we were like, "What the?" And our doctor was like, "What did you guys do? Like, what kind of cream are you guys using? What kind of medication?" We we're like, "Uh, none." Yeah, I always heard like if you want good skin, like when I was in like high school and stuff, like people were like, "Oh, you can't drink soda or eat pizza because it's really bad for your skin." But yeah, man. If you like pizza, just don't get it with the cheese. It's it might sound strange, but trust me, it's fine. Like, you'll be fine. <laughs> actually, her, my friend went to Italy. She's Italian, and she went to Italy. It's just that they actually don't even serve. They don't make pizza with cheese. The yeah, that they make it's olive not, oil. Yeah. Parm or, or not Parmesan, a little bit of spices and stuff like that, and they serve it with tomato, and that's their pizza. That's real Italian pizza. It's yeah, American avoid, uh, avoid all, yeah, exactly. <laughs> avoid all, all this type of stuff. And, and oils, in terms of oils, olive oil is the, the best kind of oil. Yeah. You don't put cheese pizza, by the way. Huh? Yeah. We just yeah, put no, the right. cheese, but it's still cheese. We use it. I'm Italian, I can say it. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you're a liar. He just caught you. <laughs> no, my friend. I went, to, I, went to and I, like, right. I went to Italy too. I went well, to. Um, it depends on where in Italy. Like in the south, what the real pizza is, <laughs> uh, we put cheese on it. Some places they don't, but but yeah, classic pizza is with um, mozzarella cheese. Yeah, and you know what though? Like the the fact that the, you said that some places don't have because I remember having uh, a pizza without cheese. It wasn't like. I don't. I didn't think about it, but I remember. I thought it was like, oh, I thought it was interesting. It was. It was good though. It was real good. And I, I think it's just because you know, it's just uh, cheese is is tons of fat, and so it tastes good. Like our our tongues like the taste of salt, sugar, and fat, right? And it does not like the taste of protein. That's why you can't just eat raw steak or raw chicken. That's why I hate turkey. Like, I've always hated turkey, because it's but pretty much can... just all protein. It's just fucking dry and nasty. I hated it always. Oh, my whole, every time Thanksgiving, I was like, God damn it. Like, I would always eat the ham or the yams or something. Like, you know, I would eat everything but the turkey. Just fucking hated turkey it. Turkey sucks. If you, think of it, you can't even eat raw, like, eggplants, for example. So, I don't know. Well, you can't eat raw um, eggplants? Yeah, does that mean, like, eggplants are bad for you? No, I, I don't know if that's true. But I, if you can't, like, there's obviously some things that you can't eat raw. Like, you can't eat dirt raw, but yet you still need the bacteria that's found in the dirt. You know, you understand? Like, like B12 is, like, found in bacteria, and we don't, like, animals have B12 in their meat because we fucking pump them, we supplement them with B12. But you can just 
just go to a pharmacy or go to like a the vitamin aisle and just buy B12 yourself and then problem solve. Or you can just like eat dirt every once in a while. Because we used to eat uh, plants right out of the ground, right, without washing them and sterilizing them like we do now. You know what I mean? Like we go through yes. tremendous amounts of practices of cleaning our water too. We used to have it in fresh water, you know. But yes. we don't do that anymore. So we were, uh, and this is not a meat versus vegan thing. This is like a, a epidemic around the world of B12 deficiency because of our ability to clean our foods better. You understand? Like this is like 50% of Americans, include 50% of Americans. This is everybody in America is deficient in B12. So that means when I, like if I'm not and you might be, you know what I'm saying? And so, so that's something to consider. So yeah, obviously there's some things that you probably just can't eat raw, but it's like universally understood. You can't eat any meat raw. Right, and there's like people that have tried and they fucking almost died, you know. Hey, what do you mean by people that? Uh, there's, there's some people that can. They just totally can survive just eating straight up like, raw meat. But like those are obviously oh, the yeah. exceptions, you know. There's some people that can. Doesn't mean you should. We all agree oh. that we all can eat broccoli, right? I don't think anyone has a broccoli allergen or it is uh, allergic to like some of the most uh, delicious fruits that we love to eat. You start to think about it, all the foods that we are forbidden to eat, like the carbohydrate uh, problem that you start to see, um, like everyone says you should eat low carbs. It's unfortunate because apples are a high carb food. Um, like some fruits and vegetables are high carbs, right? And these are some of our favorite foods to eat. We can't eat them anymore. It's very sad to think that someone will not eat a banana because it has 100 calories. Oh, my God, it's 100 calories. It's a fucking banana, dude. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you so afraid of a banana? Like, maybe you shouldn't have eaten that bacon-covered pizza, like, wrapped in the steak, you know? Maybe that's yeah. the thing you should have cut out. Maybe you shouldn't have drank that two gallons of milk. Maybe you shouldn't have, like, doused your pizza with seven different cheeses, you know? Because the banana is not killing you, I promise you. The banana is not the thing that's getting you. Um, the apple's not getting you. The eggplant, like, I don't know. I'll, have to, I, I'll tell you right now, I have no idea. Maybe you're right. I'll look into that. I'll research. You know? Um, but I got a quick question about the homework, actually. Um, no. Am I allowed? Only I like to. Only <laughs> you. <laughs> there you bring it um, back. <laughs> actually, yeah. I mean, I. I'm totally with that. I gave up, like, beef, chicken, and pork, like, a few months ago. So, I'm on my way. Yeah, what's the question um, about the... So, I like to stream sometimes on Twitch. Am I allowed to do that for work in this class? Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you? Well, I don't know. I mean, we're paying for this content that you're giving us in these assignments, so I didn't nah, want... That's, that's fine. I didn't want to you share the stream. secrets. You can't stream my <laughs> classes. But like yeah, you, yeah, of you're course, painting, course. and you could talk about what I said. I, that's that's fine. That's like, okay. in, in fact, um, if, if I were to tell you the truth, like that kind of stuff promotes my my classes and courses, because because sure. usually We're people talk very positively you. about my courses and what they've learned, and and then people are interested, Not and then they either. go to my website, and then they say, oh man, this person has some some value, and then, I mean, most of you've probably heard of me through word of mouth or sharing of my art or sharing of my lectures or someone like Denzel is a good example of someone that you know promoted me right yeah, it's so, so it's, it's, it's podcast. yeah I mean it's 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 fine like I don't okay. mind I think like even if you were to, to demonstrate or explain like what I talked about like none of that hurts me because I'm the source right and yeah I it's just nothing you can do to extract the 10 years of my knowledge, right? And be able to explain yeah. it in like an hour or two hours or 20 hours um, the way that I can. Like that's what I've trained and learned to do. So I'm not afraid at all. Like I always tell people, if you're afraid of people being able to replicate your work, then maybe your work is easily replicatable, right? So maybe you should try to consider, like yeah. I, I, I tell people when they photo bash, when you photo bash, ask yourself, could someone else, could the producer in my studio do exactly what I just did? Can they like, lasso cut this head, put it on the military body, and then call it artwork? And if the answer is yes, then maybe <laughs> maybe you're not doing anything worth of value, right? Maybe you're not like Maché Kachara, because he photobashes, but there is no doubt that that is not easy. 
Yeah. Like, you can't just all of a sudden, I can do that. It's photographic. No, fuck that. <laughs> you know? So, so yeah. I'm not worried. Don't worry about it. Like, obvious, okay. obvious, like, plagiarism or thievery, I do not, uh, obviously, do not abide to, but that's not. You're, you're, you're fine. You're good. Okay. Cool. I had a question as well um, about. I, I gotta go. Artwork. I gotta go, actually. So we'll talk about it on Sunday. Like, time is running out now. I should have been done an hour ago. I you guys and your darn vegetable yeah. questions. <laughs> Uh, if you want, you can ask in the Skype, and maybe I'll find time to look at it. And if not, uh, we can talk about it on Sunday. Yeah, it's really quick. Oh, I'll see you Sunday. Right, Thank cool. you, AJ. See you guys. Are we going to rename from Winston? Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.